Come to a bus terminal. It's called Terminal Mengui. It's not too far away from Chengdu because we are going to be taking an overnight bus which will take 12 or 13 hours to get to Surabaya. We have a, I want to say like 36 hour travel days ahead of us, including two overnights, the first one being this bus. And the whole point is to get to Surabaya because we are then getting a flight from that airport going via Singapore onto our next country, which will be very exciting, but we just have to get through this first. We have to get through this. We'll arrive in two days time and be absolutely exhausted. We haven't done an overnight bus since we were in Europe. So it's been quite a while. The good thing about overnight buses and flights is that you save on accommodation costs. So, you know, that's a bonus. If only the one bonus. Let's see how this all goes. stopped at a restaurant because apparently you can get a free dinner as part of this bus trip. We had no idea. So far we're being taken around by somebody who fancies themselves as a rally driver. So that makes life exciting. Everything could just be a little bit more comfortable and a bit more spacious, especially from my perspective. So not sure how sleep's gonna go, but I guess we'll find out. It is 12.30 in the morning and our van just pulled onto a boat. We've had to get out of the van and come onto the boat and we're now crossing between the islands of Bali and Java on our way to Surabaya. It's been a trip already, man. It's just before 10 in the morning and we have spent nine and a half hours on a minibus. And also for a brief stint on a ferry too to get between islands, so that was fun. How did you sleep or not sleep? Like how does it compare to a bigger bus for you? I feel like I got a little less sleep and had less room. So yeah, not the best, but I feel like that's kind of what we signed up for by doing this in the first place. So. Yeah, it was definitely tighter quarters and I feel like for me, I would go to sleep with the motion of the car and then wake up as soon as the minibus stopped. So it was very much dozing on and off. Yeah. But the good news is that they gave us these boxes that had breakfast in them. So once we get to the airport, we don't have to pay for breakfast because we save those. So that's a plus. That's a plus. And we are now in a grab on the way to the airport. So we're going to be super early because our flight's not till later tonight. Surabaya Concordia Premier Lounge. Correct me if I'm mistaken, but on the Amex website, which is how we get access to these lounges for free, it says that it's closed. 
It also said this on the Priority Pass website as well, that it was temporarily closed. So the fact that this is open came as a bit of a surprise. And that in and it of itself is a win. But be prepared. This is going to be a little bit harsh, but also keep in mind that anything free is good. Yes. And all of this is relative based on what we've compared it to in the past as well. So do take this with a little bit of a pinch of salt. Let's start with food. The food selection here is very limited. It caters more to a traditional local cuisine, and there is nothing wrong with that. It's just that compared to other lounges where they usually have local cuisine as well as something more Western, it doesn't provide that. Even the food that they have, it's a very small selection. They maybe have two rices, one noodles, a chicken dish, and a vegetable dish. Sounds a lot, but again, compared to other places. Your only breakfast options are toast with butter and jam. Their one fruit tray has a few pieces of watermelon and honeydew on it. It's just that compared to other places where there's like fruit trays, salad bars, there's absolutely no dessert here whatsoever. Other places have a huge breakfast selection. Oh, and then the other thing is that it's lukewarm, the food. So with that, we're rating this a 4 out of 10. We then get on to drink. If you think that the food is limited, then the drink selection is even more so. Thankfully, they do have an actual espresso machine, so they can make you some genuinely good quality coffee here. However, when we asked for anything that potentially had milk in it, they said that they didn't have any. So we were limited to just espressos, Americanos, essentially anything that didn't require anything. So that was a little bit damning in the first place. There are three different dispensers, one of which has like a detox water, which is perfectly fine, and an orange juice, which is actually just squash, which they are labeling as a juice, and then a very sweet iced tea. And then you also have the option for a hot tea or a Vietnamese coffee or something like that. But really, that's about your lot. There is no alcohol here, which again, I guess, fits in with the local vibe. While Bali is predominantly Hindu, the rest of Indonesia is majority Muslim, so it would make sense. However, it's clear that this place doesn't really cater to Western so much. And that is pretty evident from both the drinks and food selections here. Just to add to that, there is no pop. And in a lot of other places, there are several juices to choose from. Mm -hmm. So that contributes to the limited drink selection as well. Exactly. So while the score that we're going to give this may seem a little bit harsh, we do believe it's just fun in comparison to others. So we are giving this a free content. In terms of cleanliness, there's nothing really wrong with this place, especially the lounge areas and the drink and food bar. They're actually quite clean, but the bathrooms leave something to be desired. They are a little bit grotty, and when I went in, there was no toilet paper in either stall, and I had to go and track someone down to put toilet paper in the stall, and then also they don't clear up after you here, whereas at other lounges, like as soon as you're done your coffee or with your plate, they are on it and taking it away. And we don't mind bringing it up to the bar, that's not the issue, it's just again, in comparison to other places. So with that, we're rating this a 6 out of 10. This is a decent lounge by way of comfort. The chairs are all available and very plush, which is great and there is a lot of floor space here and if you want to you can more often than not find a nice little quiet corner for yourself to do whatever you need to. If I were to poke some holes then the variations in seating options would be um, something that I can maybe expand on here and speaking of expanding the tables that come with those chairs are absolutely minuscule so if you're wanting to maybe watch something on your laptop or anything like that and you want to put that on the table, you barely have room for 
a drink or anything else. And so it was to the point where essentially we were almost having like a TV dinner kind of scenario, having our plates on our laps while we were um, watching some YouTube. While obviously overall it's still a decent experience, it is still not as good as other lounges we have been to. So we are going to leave this one set up. As for amenities, this is pretty standard for a middle-of-the-pack lounge. It has charging ports. It does have a shower, but again, not so clean. And there is Wi-Fi here, but the Wi-Fi for this lounge is not working. So they've hooked us up to a different Wi-Fi network. And seemingly, we also cannot use Surfshark, which is the VPN we use, to watch, let's say, Disney or anything here, because it won't connect, which in other lounges it does. So there's just, again, a few limitations. And the amenities are pretty basic, but they're all there. So with that, we're rating the amenities a 6 out of 10. And that gives this lounge a grand total of 26 out of 50. That ranks this to be our second lowest rated lounge from our travels so far. And to be honest with you, I think that's fair. Um, certainly the vast majority of kind of the middle of the pack lounges do generally offer a bit more, either in terms of food and drink or some additional amenities or something like that. But at the same time, that one Cairo land we went to was genuinely, I, I just don't even know how you could call it a land, if I'm honest with you. Yeah. It was basically a glorified waiting area. I think there is a lot of room for potential with this, like they could really step up their game, they definitely have the tour space and the facilities to be able to do it, but it's just still leaving something to be desired by comparison to other places we've been. This lounge would make it to middle of the pack rating so easily if they just increase their selection of food and drink. That would be all they'd have to do. Exactly. But for now, let's go back to chilling. made it to Singapore Airport and we are transferring to Terminal 3 for our next flight. But before we get on that flight, we get to go to another lounge for four hours. <laughs> well, turns out that lounge is full. Turns out, thankfully, Singapore has a plethora of different lounges available, so we're going to go to the other one that should be open in Terminal 3. Changi Airport in Singapore, so given it's an all new lounge, then we have to give it an all new rating. Yes, to clarify, it was in Terminal 3 and is called the Singapore Ambassador Transit Lounge, which, given it wasn't our first choice of lounge to visit, 
but one of the downsides of being given lounge access by priority pass is you're also the first to be denied entry if they're full. This was actually our third choice, but that just tells you how many lounges are available in Terminal 3. So that stuff was food. The selection overall was decent. It seemed to have dishes ranging from a number of different cuisines depending on what you were after. It had salad options, there was fruit available as well, on top of a plethora of different dishes, all of which were actually warm this time, which was mm -hmm. quite nice, and also had a decent flavour to them. And they kept changing them. As one would good. run out, it wouldn't be like that they kept the same dish even. They would sometimes replace it with something entirely new. Yeah, they'd actually rotate. Then, yeah, I think as far as it went, then it was pretty good. It wasn't necessarily anything like to write home about, but it was nice to have that added variety. So for that one, then we gave that a 7. As for drinks, they had a pop fountain machine they had a dispenser with orange juice and apple juice i think the apple juice ran out though mm -hmm. they had hot and cold water and you could make tea with the hot water they had a coffee machine where you could choose like cappuccino latte espresso americano and the only thing they were missing was wine beer and spirits i had no alcohol it was available but i think you had to pay extra for it that is a big downside for very few lounges which means that it sounds like a harsh rating because all the other drink was pretty spot on that being said i do prefer when they have like bottles or cans of juice and pop and water because then you can take it with you too but yeah it's a pretty big downside not having free alcohol when the majority of other lounges do have it so with that we have to rate it a five on the cleanliness front then Generally speaking, it was pretty nice. I think the only reason we're marking this one down is that unlike with other lounges we've been to where the staff have been very attentive in cleaning up after you, it seems to just not be quite as present. So with that, we're giving this one an eight. In terms of comfort, the chairs were very comfortable. However, that's all they were is chairs with a table that you could sit at. There wasn't variety in what type of chair that you could sit at. Like a lot of places we've gone to have had kind of more reclining chairs, which is really nice because then you can take a little nap in the lounge, you know? And then also the fact that the floor space wasn't that big. So part of the reason we're filming out here is because it was crowded in there and we didn't really feel comfortable filming in front of so many people and reviewing it. So as a result, we are giving the lounge a 7 out of 10 for comfort. As for amenities, it was all pretty standard stuff. Thankfully, the Wi-Fi connection was much better than the one that we had in Surabaya. So that was a relief. And yeah, otherwise, you had your shower room, you had newspapers that you could take full advantage of if you wanted to. News was on in the background, which is always helpful. And so, yeah, as far as that goes, there was nothing glaringly missing, nothing offensive about what was there, all just decent stuff. So we're giving that a 7. Which means that the total score is 34 out of 50, which puts this in the mid-range of lounges, probably the lower end of mid-range lounges, but uh, not too bad at all. Yeah, that's way to while away a couple of hours. Absolutely. And we haven't had to pay for any food today, no drinks, so you know, that makes me happy. Hugs. We are going to go ahead and board our flight to our final destination for the next five days. It will be our final destination anyway. Mm -hmm. And uh, can't wait to take you along with us. Yeah, I would definitely be portraying more excitement if I wasn't so bushed. But definitely it's going to be really fun to check out this new country because I've heard so many good things about it. This is what happens when you have two nights of not sleeping in a row. We'll do our best to document the rest of our journey and let you know where we end up in the morning. After 37 hours of travel so far, we have arrived in our 14th country of Korea. 
We've just arrived to our Airbnb. It has been 40 hours of travel, so we were absolutely exhausted. But fortunately, navigating from the airport to here on the train was super fast and easy. We're gonna go to sleep. We've missed two nights of sleep, and we cannot wait to explore Seoul tomorrow and take you along with us. Until next time, take care. And keep smiling.